Let me start out this video by saying this is not a doom and gloom video. This isn't Nintendo is going out of business, the Switch is going to catch on fire and kill your house animals. It's nothing like that. This is simply a concern video. I am concerned about something. And when you're concerned about something, you obviously have a passion for it. You obviously like it. You just are worried about some things that have been happening with this. And that's really where I'm coming to a mindset with the Nintendo Switch right now because I'm very concerned about the system. And there's three games that have recently released for the Nintendo Switch that have me very concerned about the system. So I essentially want to talk about these three games and try to find some correlation because it's not going to be a concern that you think when I start talking about it. It's actually going to be something a bit different. So if you like a little bit of mystery with your Nintendo Switch videos, hey, you're in the right place. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like and share the video as well. But without any further ado, let's talk about what I am concerned with with the Nintendo Switch and why I think it's actually happening. So like I said in the intro of this video, it essentially boils down to three games that have recently released for the Nintendo Switch. And these three games were three games I was really looking forward to playing. I talked about them ever since they were announced, and I was very excited to play these games. Now the three games in question are Baldo, No More Heroes 3, and Sonic Colors Ultimate. Now if you look at these three games, they obviously have something in common. They're not that great in terms of performance, and there's issues with all three of these games, and it's kind of a telling thing because it seems like this is something that is happening more and more frequently with the system, and we're going to get into why, but I basically want to tell you guys what the issues are with these games. So with Baldo, this is a game that has a lot of technical issues. There's things like save files disappearing, key items missing. Go over to Switch Up's channel. They've been doing a lot of coverage over on Baldo, and they've been sort of chronicalizing all of their issues they've had with this game, and that's really disappointing to me because this game looked absolutely fantastic I wanted to play this game on day one and possibly double dip on it and pick up a physical version whenever that version comes out as well but it seems like the game is just so buggy and broken with its essential things that it becomes very problematic now the next game is of course no more heroes 3 which I love the no more heroes franchise and I don't think no more heroes 3 is necessarily like a horrible game or anything like that don't get me wrong I think the combat is absolutely stellar in the game I think the audio is really well done, but you can't look past the graphics, especially when you're in the open world segments. I can handle the graphics when you're in combat. I think they're pretty well done and the frame rate is pretty smooth. But once you get to the overworld, things just, well, they turn into absolute shit. The game runs slow, it's laggy, there's pop-up, there's all sorts of textures coming in and out. Some textures don't even load and it's like, well, what happened with this game? Is like, is the Nintendo Switch the problem with this game? Like, why is this game so underperforming in terms of technological specs when realistically the art style should lend itself to be something that looks great on the Nintendo Switch? And of course, the final game is Sonic Colors Ultimate. Now, I am a Sonic the Hedgehog fan. I have Sonic the Hedgehog Ice. Like, this, this is for real, folks. This is for real real but they massacred my boy on the Nintendo Switch version of the game and there's so many issues going on with the Switch version of the game that Sega is now well aware of them and of course is issuing a patch for it hopefully at some point in time but the issues stem from basic things like floors disappearing or lasers not loading in and they're hitting you to where just levels completely crap on themselves now there was some sort of issues going on where it was like seizure inducing and evidently that was done via an emulator but Game Explain actually made a video on it and they they were able to replicate some of these seizure inducing things that were happening in the game and it's like well what 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 is going on these three games pretty much released in rapid succession within the past month for the nintendo switch and all three of these games are fundamentally buggy or fundamentally have issues on the graphical level of the game so it's very easy to go ahead and say well the nintendo switch is the problem of this the nintendo switch is where the root of this issue is with the hardware of the system because i mean let's be realistic the hardware for the Nintendo Switch is pretty much, uh, you know, older technology and things like that. You know, there's laptops that have come out in the past five years that are stronger than that. Of course, you have systems like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X also available on the market. And you might be thinking, that's what I'm going to say. Well, the problem is the Nintendo Switch and the hardware of the system. We need this Nintendo Switch Pro that was heavily rumored. But I don't think that's the case at all. Because you have to look at other games on the Nintendo Switch that are similar to this and don't have these issues. 
issues. I mean, Baldo really looks just like an action RPG game. Think of how many awesome action RPG games are on the Nintendo Switch done by small studios or big studios that don't have these core fundamental issues. No More Heroes 3 is an action adventure game. I mean, Astral Chain didn't have any of these issues. Astral Chain looked absolutely gorgeous. The other No More Heroes games ran nice and smooth on the Nintendo Switch. We got Bayonetta on there as well, so I don't think it's an issue of power. And then Sonic Colors Ultimate, I mean, come on, it's a platformer. How many platformers are on the Nintendo Switch, whether they're 2D or 3D platformers that run and look great? I mean, big companies like Nintendo themselves with Super Mario Odyssey, smaller companies like New Super Lucky's Tales and A Hat in Time. Like, it's not an issue of power. And I feel like that's where this plot twist is going to come in because I expect you to think that I was going to say that, but no. I don't think that's the issue at all because like I said, look at how many big games are on the Nintendo Switch and don't have a fraction of the issues that these three games have released. So then what would be the problem? And that's where things get very interesting because I'm almost getting Nintendo Wii feelings from this. And what do I mean by that? Well, on the Nintendo Wii, you could release a game that pretty much sucked, but if it had a character attached to it or a simple plug and play mechanic where it was like, you know, motion controls, like tossing a beanbag, like carnival games or something like that, the game would tend to sell. And really, developers ended up getting lazy with Nintendo Wii games because it didn't really matter. These games are going to sell anyways. So why go through all the extra time and effort to make something that's a big production? when realistically you could just push something out the door that's you know okay it works and you know it's not the best experience of it but it doesn't matter because the Nintendo Wii had sold so many systems and I almost feel like that's kind of what's going on with the Nintendo Switch. I'm starting to think that some of these third-party developers are really just starting to get lazy with the system and starting to realize, hey, Switch games sell really well. You know, we could take old ports of games and bring them over to the Switch and then fix them at a later date and people will buy them. Like, look at Saints Row 3. Saints Row 3, at its core, is a really fun game, but when it initially launched on the Switch, it had a lot of problems. And, like, these three games are all sort of falling in line with that. All third-party games coming to the Nintendo Switch, maybe for a quicker cash grab. Now, obviously, No More Heroes 3 is the more polished of the three games that we're talking about here because you can actually play it and you can actually enjoy this experience. And Grasshopper isn't really known for their graphical prowess, but still, like, the open world shouldn't be nearly as bad as it was. So what was the rush with this game? Are No More Heroes fans that hungry for a new game in the franchise? Or maybe did they push this game out the door to make some quick cash to work on other projects that Grasshopper is wanting? to work on. I think that's really the issue that's starting to develop with the Nintendo Switch are lazy third-party ports. You kind of saw it initially when the system launched and then things got substantially better. Sure, there were games like Troll and I and WWE 2K18, but for the most part, a lot of Nintendo Switch versions of third-party games were pretty comparable to the other versions of the games. Like Look at games like Skyrim, The Witcher 3, uh, Doom 2016. Like These are kick-ass games on the Nintendo Switch. And then you have games like Sonic Colors, Ultimate, you have games like Baldo, you have games like No More Heroes 3 coming out that just look like they belong on a previous generation system or have fundamental bugs that are so broken that, that they completely ruin the game experience. So it's something that I think needs to be discussed. And I don't think people would actually look at this because most of the stuff I see on Twitter talking about things like the graphical issues in No More Heroes 3 and in Sonic Colors Ultimate, everyone's like, oh, well, it's because the Nintendo Switch is weak. You know, that's the reason why it's weaker than the other systems. And I call bullshit on that because there are tons of games on the Switch that look and play great that were done on the PS4 and the Xbox One that are very comparable to those versions of the game. It really boils down to the teams making these games, the developers making these games, because those are the people that are responsible for bringing these games to the Nintendo Switch, and they are responsible for the quality of these titles. And if they're seeing that games that maybe don't have the best graphical prowess and maybe don't have the best frame rates that come out on the Nintendo Switch, Switch and these games sell well, it's like, well, maybe we could get away with that too. Maybe we could cut a few corners here and there. So now you're starting to get experiences on the Switch that aren't really indicative of what the system is capable of and indicative of what this system is capable of doing when it comes to things like graphics and things like that. And I know there's going to be people in the comments that are like, well, graphics don't matter. And realistically, they do matter because if graphics didn't matter, every game would look like an Atari 2600 game and you would have like this crazy gameplay, but it would just be an Atari 2600 600 style game like games 
progress games evolve games grow and when you're growing games you're also growing engines you're also growing graphical components of these games and you're growing the worlds of these games and i don't think it's a knock on the nintendo switch hardware that some of these games that are coming out are just broken and buggy messes i really think it has to do with the companies making these games and they're kind of half-assing it so that's sort of my little theory here and maybe it's a bit tinfoil hat maybe it is you know sort of indicative of the software but when i look at those three games baldo no more heroes 3 and sonic colors ultimate i could find games on the nintendo switch that are similar to that that look a hell of a lot better run a hell of a lot better and play a hell of a lot better without the main issues and these are coming from companies as small as small indie developers or even bigger companies i mean grasshopper and sega are pretty big companies so you would expect a certain level of quality with these games when you're buying them but those are just my thoughts on this situation. Like I said, maybe it's a bit tinfoil hat, but it's something that definitely needs to be discussed because if these half-assed versions of games keep coming out on the Nintendo Switch or these half-assed games in general when it comes to things like graphics, people are gonna end up getting tired of this, much like they did with the Wii. Because while the Wii was very successful, you gotta remember, the last year or two of the Wii's life cycle completely fell off a cliff. That's why the Wii U came out when it did, because that system was just like, Whoop! and it fell off a cliff and people stopped buying systems and they stopped buying uh, uh software for the system as well so let me know what you think of everything in the comment section down below and as always guys thank you for checking out this video hope you guys enjoyed it of course give me your feedback share it around if you enjoyed it if you are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button and as always i'll catch you guys on the next video later